Welcome to this week's Reflection. There's been a lot of excitement in Melbourne over the weekend as we have come out of lockdown. Maybe you were excited. Some excitement perhaps seems a little over the top, like the spontaneous street party in Chapel Street, Paran. The public health official the next day was very measured when asked about the street party. He said something like this. It's been a tough journey and I can understand people letting their hair down. But it is important that we follow the rules. We saw celebrations in Sydney as well when they opened up after their lockdown. Now I confess that midnight shopping doesn't appeal to me one little bit. I'm in bed asleep at that hour. Now I have gone out and enjoyed coffee in the coffee shop again, which has been really nice. Just one little thing that makes uh, me, others, feel just a little bit normal again. And I'm now thinking about going somewhere in January, going on a holiday, leaving Melbourne. Can you believe that? Will I remember how to drive long distance? It will be a nice change. I'm very thankful that so many Victorians have tried to do the right thing. Follow the rules, get vaccinated, stay away from family and friends. And for some, this has been very costly. They've had been left with feelings of isolation and being unable to visit loved ones who are in hospital or in aged care. I'm so thankful for the sacrifices people have made for the good and for the well-being of others. I'm thankful for our hard-working medical staff in hospitals who put their own health and well-being on the line in serving others. We've all done our bit, but some have had to carry a bigger load than others. This Sunday at Glen Waverley Uniting Church, Alan and I are working with the theme of Thanksgiving, giving thanks, giving thanks to God for people, for the people who've served us during this COVID pandemic, for the people who make up our diverse congregation and contribute to the life of our congregation, even through this time of restriction. Thankful for our health, for the environment that which we enjoy, for the beauty of spring gardens. I keep marvelling at the flowers and for wonderful animals and for the significant gift of family and friends. When you pause to think about it, there's much to be thankful for and so much that is easy to take it for granted. Over the last six weeks or so, we've had three cards on our front lawn at the church that people could take and write a message and pop into someone's letterbox. They've been springtime cards. Before I go on, we've taken them away now. But one card was a thank you card, an opportunity to write a message on a card to say thank you to someone and to pop it in a letterbox. The scriptures offer us a strong encouragement to give thanks to God. God has blessed us. God is there and with us and for us. God has watched over us. God, who is our provider. Here are a few passages that urge us to be thankful. We can read Ephesians chapter 5, verses 19 and 20. As you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I like that last bit, at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verses 16 and 18, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 
and Colossians chapter 3 verses 15 and 17. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in the one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs and spiritual songs to God. And whatever you do, in word or do, deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. In all that we do, in every situation in which we face and find ourselves in, there is the encouragement in Scripture to acknowledge God and to do it with an attitude of thankfulness. Sometimes we, and I include myself, we do need to be reminded to have an attitude of gratitude and thankfulness to God. Also toward the people around us. For we do not live on this earth as isolated individuals. We live in relationship. We live in community. Church congregations are an expression of community. And so we're thankful both to God and to our family and friends and to our community, or all who all keep us or help us to be the people that we are. All praise and thanks be to God. Let us pray. Loving God, help us to remember to be thankful. Thankful to you, our Lord, our provider, our comfort and strength. We give thanks for Jesus Christ, our brother and friend, our teacher, and indeed the giver of life. We give thanks for your Holy Spirit, our enabler and advocate. We give thanks for each other. Generous God, we give you our heartfelt thanks and praise. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Now, just before I conclude, I've been wondering about the future of these weekly reflections. Restrictions are now easing, especially from this coming Friday. But I think many will be hesitant about joining in larger community gatherings. So I'm thinking that I'll continue the reflections during the month of November. And then I'm wondering that I might change to offering a monthly reflection posted on the first Thursday of the month. That way, I would maintain this online presence and continue to offer a reflection, but changing in December to monthly rather than weekly. So I'm interested in your feedback. What do you think? Is that an appropriate way to go? Send me an email or send it to the church. So send an email to the church or to myself and let me know what you think. So thank you for joining me today. And uh, as you go further into this week and as you start to enjoy more freedom, may God be with you and God bless you. Amen.